how relevant are the SDGs for nations emerging out of poverty or conflict? How relevant are they for nations who has been in difficult situations for close to 30 years? A nation like mine, who is now trying to re-engage with international financial institutions, getting very close to areas clearance after three years' hard work. A nation who is trying to reform the security sector. A nation who is trying to put in place systems of governance to provide service to these people so that we become a legitimate government. Then you will ask a question. So if I ask my colleague on the right and ask him, you invest. 14, 15 billion dollars on SDGs, how much did you invest in Somalia? Of course, he will say none. You ask each and every one of them, to my country, most of them, how much have you invested to eradicate problems in Somalia, working directly with the government of Somalia? They will tell you, most of them, none. Or we work through ABC. Any assistance that is given to any nation that doesn't provide legitimacy to the government, it will never be sufficient and it's going to be temporary. Very true that we're working a case here of poverty reduction, but the world is at that stage where it's linked with security, linked with service delivery, linked with good governance, linked with eradication, corruption. That is why I think in the context of where I stand and where my country is today re-emerging, we need to change the narrative, the old narrative, the old mindset of how we've seen the world as one global world. There are nations who have different needs with investment that is different from others. We cannot be measuring SDGs as required of the Norwegians and the Danish and the Swedish or Canadians and say to other nations who are emerging, uh, we will come back to you once we are able to use the same tool. There must be different tools in helping different nations based on the stage where they are. That is why I think the debate positively has to be how far have we reached in eradicating poverty or supporting nations but also how effective have the model itself been. First, I'm gonna say that the universal quest to attain SDGs is not a one size fits all scenario. So that is, for example, a line I would leave uh, with this audience. And the reason is that for the investment of SDGs to work, uh, you will deal with nations who have had an absent of institutions. And in that, individuals or entities have been filling the space of institutions. And they become relevant and important, maybe uh, for more risk of that particular nation. Now, in our country, we've started rebuilding these institutions. Investing in rebuilding these institutions itself must be seen as part of attaining the SDGs. That is the magic word, number one. So in other words, one has to understand that in the context of my country, we came to the realization that changing the narrative of the nation itself have proven to be far more difficult than rebuilding the nation. And it's going to take time for that narrative, and as they put it perfectly, mindset to change. The second now I would want uh, our colleagues uh, of here to also take with is that there's a demographic, demographic change that are rapidly shaping in our region. The Sub-Saharan Africa are the nations of which most of the people live under two dollars a day, yet there, 70% of the population are under the age of 30. If the investment is not tailored toward that, invested in, as you put it, giving them an opportunity, that is going to be the biggest risk we will face. 
Provided that we invest correctly, however, that is the biggest opportunity we have to do something with SDGs and make these nations nations who, who contribute. In other words, tailor-made investment is required. The fourth element here is that the contribution of the bankers and the development uh, entities need to be seen as an investment. These investments must be, be inclusive investment that generate inclusive economic growth, but that communities feel immediately and individuals feel, while at the same time lending legitimacy to the nation's institutions. And the final point is that in every nation, with the tremendous challenges, you will find a segment of that society who has a great capability and potential, who've survived all the challenges despite all odds. In our case, you have a thriving business community who has been built on trust while every other institution broke down for more than 20 years. Understanding that context from the banks and development partners' views, even if it is investment and making money a strategy, it is also something we can, we can tap into. The final point I want to attempt here is that uh, we've been working very closely with the international financial institutions to reform our economy, to re-engage with them so that we have finally access to the national development and, and uh, national financial institutions. And we're set now to be reaching that target in the next few months, uh, within the next three, four months. And once that has happened, uh, I'm going to show a new picture of our country. Uh, uh, Somalia shouldn't be seen for what it has been or what it is, but should be seen what it can be and the untold opportunities it has. Uh, the nation that links Indian Ocean and the Red Sea together. The nation that links Africa to the Middle East. The nation who links the Horn of African countries because of our origin and every neighbor of ours have millions of Somalis also living there. A nation with potential resources on oil and gas, natural min minerals, agriculture, service, economy, of it is a strategic location. And a population of which 70% of them are under the age of 30. Therefore, in the next 20 years, we should be seeing our country as a nation development partner, see attractive nation, invest, and our people in the future welcome others to seek job and welcome refugees as others did to me in the late 80s. That's where I